Honorable Shari De Castro, Minister of Education and Sports. Honorable Stacy Matho, past District Governor Van Sluis, past District Governor Delma Maduro, and past Assistant Governor Audley, past Assistant Governor Ryan, presidents of the Rotary Clubs, Rotarians, and guests. I am Rosemary Flax, Assistant Governor. Good afternoon. That doesn't sound too healthy. Good, that's better. I am happy to see all of you and apologize for the lateness of our invitation. We are pleased that from the little you have heard about the program, you recognize that we can only benefit from it in a big way based on the conflict and based on conflict and violence that is pervading the world and our territory. I welcome all of you to this reception on building peace through service with a focus on nonviolent communication social, emotional intelligence, peace and conflict prevention, rotary skills, building, and character development utilizing Rotary's four-way test. At this point, I want to invite all rot Rotarians to stand and repeat Rotary's four-way test. Of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. This evening, Mr. Thomas Kalassi, a member of the Rotary Club of Ohio, a certified nonviolent communication trainer, and the training team leading of leader of build, building peace through service will present to us. But before he does that, I wish to invite past president, past district governor Delma to give us some highlights about the program and Rotarian Tom's work in this field. Rotarian Delma. Honorable Shari E. De Castro, Minister of Education, Youth Affairs and Sports, Honorable Stacy Mather and Director of YEP. <laughs> um, members of law enforcement. Oh. <laughs> Honorable Natalia Wheatley, what an honor it is to have you, Mr. Premier. Thank you very much for gracing us with your presence. Let's give him a round of applause. Walking on cue. <laughs> I do believe we have representation from uh, faith uh, churches. We have representation from law enforcement. And of course, we have a lot of educators, a few educators with us tonight. I really would like to recognize you because so much of what we're going to do depend on your involvement. And of course, we have a, a peace building champions. Fellow Rotarians, including Tom, who indeed is a fellow Rotarian, and of course, uh, PDG Vance. All our Rotarian family, including Rotaractors, a very pleasant good evening to all of you. Today, I am reminded of the powerful legacy of Rotary and its enduring, enduring commitment to fostering peace understanding and goodwill across the globe and building peace through service speaks to the very heart of Rotary's mission. It is a, it is a testament to our belief that peace is, merely, it is not merely a distant goal, but a living reality that can be achieved through our daily actions and contributions in our communities. 
I am truly grateful for your presence this evening, and I'd like to recognize P.S. Uh, Abbott Smith and your beloved wife. Lovely to have you with us from um, Unite BVI. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, so we are grateful to have all of you. And I have every reason to believe that we have a shared vision for a future where our community thrives in peace and mutual understanding. Building Peace Through Service, a program conceived with the aim of fostering peace through active service, was met with great promise a few years ago. But like many ambitious projects across the globe, its momentum was slowed by the pandemic. However, the ideals that underpin this program, which are compassion, community, and connection, have only grown more relevant in the intervening years. We have started to breathe new life into this initiative, which was started by the Rotary Club of St. Thomas and the Rotary, the Rotary family of the British Virgin Islands gladly join this movement in the very early stages. We also recognize the strong support by the Rotary Foundation and our international Rotary partners. The essence of this program is simply, yet, is simple, is simple, but profound. It's to cultivate peace and understanding by engaging our youth in meaningful service projects. By embedding this ethos in schools, faith-based youth programs, and after-school initiatives, we are not just teaching our children and young people about service. We are empowering them to become ambassadors of peace in their communities and beyond. The value of the peace of the Building Peace Through Service program to our community cannot be overstated. In a world that is increasingly divided, teaching our youth the importance of nonviolence communication, conflict prevention and resolution, empathy, service, and community engagement lays the groundwork for a more peaceful understanding society. It offers a pathway for our young people to channel their energies and capacities or capabilities into positive community building activities, reducing the allure of negative influences and fostering a culture of peace and mutual respect. The in involvement of government leaders, policymakers, law enforcement educators, and clergy nonprofit organizations, etc. Their involvement is crucial to the success of this program. Your support, your leadership, and your endorsement can amplify the impact of this initiative, integrating it into the very fabric of our community's daily life. By working together, we can ensure that the Building Peace Through Service program becomes a cornerstone of youth engagement across the British Virgin Islands. I invite each of you to join us in this noble endeavor. Let us harness our collective expertise, our resources, and passion to empower our youth through service to be the architects of a more peaceful world. Together, we can make the Building Peace Through Service Program, a beacon of hope and a testament to what we can achieve when we unite for a common good. And tonight, as you've heard from our age, we are honored to have Thomas Khaleesi as our keynote speaker. And we'll hear a little bit more about him. So thank you for your time here with us this evening. Thank you for your consideration and your future contributions to this vital initiative. Let us move forward hand in hand to sow the seeds of peace and service in the hearts and minds of our young people for a brighter, more unified future. Thank you very much. <laughs> Madam Agee. 
I have the distinct honor of inviting Honorable Charity Castro, Minister of Education and Sports, to come up to the lectern and make an address or give remarks. Okay, is that better? <laughs> Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me acknowledge uh, the Premier, uh, as well as Honorable Meta, um, all my education officials present, uh, Rotarians. Once again, good afternoon, and thank you for the invitation um, and the opportunity to partner in this amazing initiative. Of course, you would have been engaging with some of our education and youth stakeholders, and we have the Ministry of Education, as well as the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports, and the Elmore Stout High School present um, this evening. And we're happy to engage, uh, really to understand the continued opportunity that exists uh, for us to focus in on the areas um, that Mrs. Maduro just mentioned um, in relation to nonviolent communication, social emotional intelligence, uh, of course, peace and conflict, prevention, resolution, skill building, and of course, character development. Uh, we see it as integral to the work that we do, um, of course. Uh, we have to focus in more on youth and sports development, um, and education uh, ultimately plays a significant role in that. Um, and ultimately, of course, when we consider some of the challenges that we're having in our communities, uh, we often tell persons that our schools are really microcosms of our community. And so we can't be alarmed when we see certain challenges um, in relation to the conflicts um, and the various uh, disciplinary challenges as an example that we see. Um, and I believe programs like this will ultimately assist us in that regard to really uh, allow for the opportunity for character development so our young people understand the skills that are required to ultimately put themselves in a better position. Overall, uh, the ministry has um, saw great potential in the area of youth and sports development, and the government has taken significant strides to shore up our ability to deliver programs. And so we do already have the infrastructure in place last year with the return of the after school and summer school programs, and we believe that we have a facility by which we can engage um, this program in a very meaningful way. Currently, um, after school programs are facilitated at every primary and secondary public school across the territory on every island. And so there is an opportunity for us to engage in that way, um, as well as um, eventually um, see how through our curriculum offerings, we can integrate um, these dynamics so that ultimately every day, every child is impacted. And so overall, I want to um, really appreciate this type of uh, partnership. We can't do it on our own. Um, and while the government has been making strides, um, today uh, we had our planning day for the Ministry of Education. And I believe what you're doing here today really speaks to the mindset that we are engaging in this year, in 2024. Um, at the signing of the MOU um, that we just signed with Unite BVI, I received a very unusual and unexpected gift. Um, it was a book from Mr. Kamau Georges um, called Upstream by Dan Heat. And I started reading it. And amazing, it's become the impetus for our theme for the year in the Ministry of Education, Youth Affairs and Sports, moving upstream. What's the main story in the book? You have two people, they're sitting by the river, and they're just chilling, you know, enjoying the scenery, and then they see a child coming downstream, panicking. And they jump in, and they, they get in, they swim to save the child. They come back out, they see another child coming downstream. Panicking, they jump back in, pull that child out. Two children start coming downstream. They themselves start to get tired, and they're like, well, what's going on? And one of the two people started to walk out and go upstream to try to figure out what's going on. So the person was like, well, where you going? The next person, well, where you going? You got children here to save. And he said, I'm going upstream to figure out who it is joining the children in the river. And so that really speaks to how do we not be reactive but how do we take preventative measures, systemic changes that ultimately create possibilities that don't lead 
um, to negative issues. And so I know in the ministry, we're moving upstream this year and we're seeking to strategize and create opportunities for systemic change and proactive measures that allow us to go ahead. And, and, and in the area of youth and sport, we're very serious about that. And so just to end, government's commitment really has seen an increase. Um, I was just conferring with my director of DYAS. Um, in 2022, the budget for DYAS would have been about $600,000. Um, annually. Um, last year we got up to a little over 900,000. This year we're at 2.1 million dollars. And so it really speaks to the progressive and proactive mindset of ensuring that through after school programs, through summer school programs, through partnership with schools, that we're seeking to really improve on youth and sports development in the territory. So I thank you for this opportunity and I look forward to the potential partnership that exists um, through this program. Thank you. Oh, well said. Honorable Natalia, Premier, may I invite you to also make brief remarks? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Minister uh, for Education, uh, Youth Affairs and Sports as well as Honorable Stacey Mather, Deputy uh, Speaker, uh, specially invited guests, um, Rotarians, uh, members of, of the um, education system, and other specially invited guests. Uh, let me just express what an honor and a privilege it is for me uh, to be among you uh, the work that you are engaging in with this program is extremely important uh, to not just the future but the present, uh, our peace, our security, our ability to have a, a high quality of life for as many persons in the Virgin Islands as possible. Uh, before coming here, I was at the National Security Council, I'm a National Security Council member, uh, where we discuss uh, matters of security for the Virgin Islands. And uh, just as the minister was describing with uh, the young people going downstream, uh, in National Security Council, we witness a lot of young persons going downstream. And we've started to ask ourselves um, the difficult questions in terms of what's uh, leading to young persons displaying this anti-social uh, deviant behavior. And uh, one young person who is um, a suspect in an incident that happened recently, I was given his name and I realized that I came across the name of the young person before um, when I was Minister of Education um, the young, this young person who was a student in a primary school his name kept coming up to me and was having a lot of difficulties in school a uh, lot of you know um, incidents of anger and frustration and you know, you know, I had to delve deeper into what was happening with this young man, and you realize he had uh, lots of challenges in the home uh, that were being um, displayed in school. And it, it really brought home to me uh, the fact uh, that when young persons get involved uh, in a lot of antisocial behavior, uh, there's a real root in society. And it really speaks to the responsibility that we all have. Uh, families, uh, the education system, the churches, the social system. The responsibility we all have in ensuring uh, that we really address some of the challenges which lead to uh, the challenges uh, that we ultimately face and that threaten our own security. And let me just uh, celebrate uh, the Rotary Club and celebrate 
are those persons who are part of other service organizations. I myself am a Lions Club member. I'm very proud of the work that the service clubs in the Virgin Islands do uh, to fill a lot of gaps which exist in our society. And um, the effort that you're embarking on uh, with this program is one I, I certainly celebrate. I'm cert certainly happy to support in whatever way I can um, from my seat. And of course, um, uh, also my support for the Minister of Education and her team um, in supporting uh, these type of programs. Uh, but let me just say again, um, our community needs more civic-minded individuals, needs more po need more persons uh, who will you know, put their shoulder to the wheel and to do the heavy lifting uh, required to ensure uh, that we build a community of peace here. So thank you for allowing me to be um, a part of, of this um, event, and I'm certainly looking forward to the, the positive fruits that this will bring. Thank you so much. Thank you, Premier. On behalf of the Rotary Clubs of the BVI, I wish to thank you and your cabinet for what you do, continues to do. I know that you are all working against all odds, and we just want to say that we appreciate you. I also want to say that this afternoon, we had the opportunity to visit YEP. And I am in awe about the work that Honorable Stacey Mater is doing at YEP. We also want to say, Honorable Stacey, I don't know whether you, what your involvement is now, but I know when my grandchildren were going there, they were well treated and well educated. You helped to give them the foundation that springboard from which they leap and are doing very well. So I want to say thank you very much. Now the, the, the distinct pleasure is mine to introduce our speaker tonight. And our speaker is Thomas R. Kalesi. Am I, did I spell it? Yes? Good. Tom is the founder of Kalesi and Associates Company. He has provided counseling, coach, and training services for over 40 years in Central Ohio and beyond. Tom is a certified non-violent communication trainer. One of his capacity skills is conflict prevention resolution. His executive coaching and training services helps people realize their full individual and relationship potential. The company's motto is achieving results through communication, connection, and collaboration. Now, Tom has been involved in quite a lot of programs, and I have a few here, and I would like to share them with you. He's founder, trainer, moderator of Empowering Peace Builders online training series. He is a peace and conflict prevention resolution skills building pro programmer featuring nonviolent communication and Rotary's four-way test. Tom has helped facilitate service learning programs for over 30 years. Current youth and young adult peace service training programs include Young Peace Builders, ages 8 to 18, Peace and Conflict Prevention Resolution and Social Emotional Intelligence, Youth Voice in Community Ages 12 to 14, Peace and Social Justice 15 to 18 years, 
Nonviolent Communication and Social Action, 19 to 23 years. He is well qualified to do this work. He has a master's degree from Ohio State University, Department of Education. He is a certified trainer for the Center of Nonviolent Communication. He is also a graduate of the Family Therapy Institute in Cincinnati, Ohio. Additionally, Tom is an alumnus of the Leadership Ohio program. He's also affiliated with, guess who? Rotary Club in Columbus, Ohio for the past 23 years. Rotary District 6690 Peace Chair in Central and South Ohio. And he's also a member of Rotary Action Group for Peace for the past six years. Please join me in and giving Tom a rousing welcome to the lecture. When I listen to all of you, what you've already shared, I feel a sense of humility and gratitude to be able to be present with you all to witness what you're already doing. And I know there's a certain team of Rotarians that we were planning to do. I was over at St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands, and they pulled together about 50 people last Saturday doing the program. And I said, you know, could we just get together, you know, maybe on one evening, and in like a day and a half, two days, this thing happened tonight. So I'm just so grateful about that. I want to be respectful of your time tonight, coming out here, and I'd like to share three things, three main topics. I'd like to go through a PowerPoint that I'm going to mainly go an overview of this program, and I'm going to go relatively quickly, but I'm going to stop at some of the youth programs. Second, we're hoping we can have a little bit of questions and answers and reflections because there's so much talent and resources in the room. Maybe we can uh, do some cross-pollination. And lastly, I'd like you to be thinking about four questions. And you even have some little stick um, notes. The four questions about tonight are, what's working? Because it's important to celebrate. And as I heard the Honorable Minister of Education talk about, look at that you've almost doubled the commitment of funding. Okay, in a short amount of time. And it's, and it's not just funding, it's working. There's partnerships. I was able to be over at the YEP program today, YEP program, wow. It was fun with your staff, Stacy. Thank you so much. So the other question is, what are the challenges? What still do we need to do? And we wanna hear, what are your suggestions? Because I never know who, is, we're all teachers and learners as far as I'm concerned. And I never know who's going to be the one person in the room that's going to say something that's going to be the pearl for somebody else. So it's just not Tom as a presenter. We're all in this together. And finally, we want to know, what do you have to offer? Because one of the needs we all have is to contribute for purpose. And you can see some yellow cards on the table. Those are need cards. So just take a look at those. And no matter who we are, and, and I have the privilege of actually doing online programs on six continents now with this work. And whether we're in Hong Kong or Sydney, Australia, or I'm working with people in um, Mongolia, in Asia, etc., Africa, same needs. So I'm going to give two quotes and I'm going to then start the PowerPoint. Marshall Rosenberg that I started with, uh, trained with, uh, um, is the founder of this nonviolent communication pro program. There's two quotes. Everything we do is in the service of a need. Everything we do. We have needs for safety. We have needs for relationship. And we could name probably 20 needs. Respect, honesty, consideration, shared reality, responsibility. We have a need for purpose. There's a lot of Rotarians in the room. We get in there because it's service above self. We want to contribute. But everyone has their own talent and their own purpose of why they're here on earth. 
we, that's a need we want to help illuminate with our children also. And then finally, there's larger meaning of life needs. Everything we do is in the need of a service of a need. If you take one thing from what I'm going to share, please write this one down. When I heard this, I shuddered. It just ran right through me. Violence is a tragic expression of unmet needs. Violence is a tragic expression of unmet needs. I'm trying to get a need met. And this is the, these are my resources. This is all I know. And boom, you know, I want to go after your power over me, I'll power over you. Well, what we want to do is we want to embrace, we want to listen, what is it, what's, how are you hurting? How can we go under the words and get to the core and help lift that person up with empathy and then they invite them to learn that there's other ways to do it. Some communication connects, others creates more separation. So we're going to be dealing with a way that is a proven way that we can create more connection with others. So that's my, me there. And I'm going to go through this. How I got here, I'll just be brief. There's been three parts to my career, and I'll be brief about this. From 25 to 40 years old, I've worked with at-risk youth and families. A lot of pain, a lot of trauma, working with them. Love them. And they can tell in a minute if you really trust them or if you're real and authentic. And if you're not real, you'll lose them. And I love, you know, got them. And I actually went to my director 10 days in the job where I was working with this youth that were kicked out of school or runaways and high trauma. And I said, not much did I learn about what I'm doing in college. This is more right from the heart, okay, what we're doing with these kids. And they really got it. So what happens then, at 40 years old, I had a major change, because I'm from a city of one million people, and there's 50,000 students in our school district. We had a 40% dropout rate, 40%. And I said, something needs to happen. So I got some of the local leaders together, and I said, I want to start a nonprofit. And what we did is we ended up developing service learning model. We were trained the trainer group. Because I said, how do we get young people excited about learning? And what happens in service learning, and you may know this, there's three parts. You learn your academics while you're working on real life projects in the community. Like, why don't we invite the young people to figure out what the adults are trying to figure out, okay? And make it academic. They're doing reflections throughout. And the model is, if I learn, and I'm gonna then go teach you, Immediately, I'll keep 90% of what I learned. And that's what you talked about is the character development. So what happened here, I got excited about it, and I said, let's go create. So what you're going to see here is this alliance with the Rotary Seven Areas of Service, promoting peace is the upper left one, and also education and literacy is also another one. Rotary actually does them all. And by the way, environment's the new one. And when I'm down here in the Virgin Islands, I'm going, oh my goodness. There's new money through Rotary because they want to see new projects in the environment, by the way. So, but this is a peace program that's got great potential. It also aligns with the United Nations uh, Sustainable Goals. It's, uh, and how we got here, briefly, is a, um, a colleague of mine that used to live on St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, got introduced to nonviolent communication, said, this is changing my life, I want to change my career. She came up to Ohio State University in Columbus. Her mother lived there, and I mentored her. But I met her in a workshop, and she says, I want to bring this back to my island. I said, let's go. So we started doing workshops. I got introduced to the Rotary Club of St. Thomas. I got a keynote. I said, you want to do a global grant? We did. And lo and behold, they had connection with you. And so when we did the community assessment survey, we had both the, the uh, St. Thomas and also the clubs from um, British Virgin Islands, you all. It was so exciting to hear them and, even, and all the laying out the, the goals. So that's how we got here. So here's the quotes that I just shared with you as Marshall Rosenberg. This is in 60 countries, but this is important. This is not just a communication tool. This is a way of living. How do we shift the paradigm from power over and power under that's been going on for centuries? And how do we shift it? We're like, if I'm a power under, and I, when I get bigger, I get to be over you, 
and I don't care about you, I, I want what I want, you know, and we talked about some of the antisocial behavior. This is about learning that everyone's voice counts, everyone matters, everyone is respected, and when you create respect and emotional and physical safety, magic can happen. Because our natural state is we want to connect. That's what Gandhi, Dr. Martin Luther King, and many others have taught us. And so we're looking at, looking at seeking mutuality with respect for all. We do in this first phase, we're going to engage people, educate them, and empower them. So what we did is we actually started out with the Rotarians and the community sector people like you all, and they went through a six-hour series walk in the walk, and some of them representing neighborhoods said, we hear so much conflict, and then we get triggered. We need to get these skills first, so we're doing it. Some said, this is improving my marriage. <laughs> you know, they said, we're talking better with each other. And then they're actually resolving conflict nonviolently. So what happens then is we lined up, you heard it lines up with the four-way test. So nonviolent communication, when we say, is it the truth? Well, is it your truth, my truth, I'm going to, you know, et cetera. It's that we differentiate between the difference between moral judgment and value judgments. Because we all judge. Little kids running in the street, the car's coming by, we're not going to stop and negotiate. We're going to grab them, make sure they're safe. So the safety is important, let's say. But in this, when we get into what we call moral judgment, I'm right, you're wrong, that, that's stupid, you don't, I don't care about you, I'm just out for myself, that's going to create more and more separation. When we get down to the needs of values, we may have different ways to get there, but we have the common needs. So needs, this is a needs-based program. When we think about is it fair to all concerned, I want to, here's the short version, silent mind, open heart. Silent mind, open heart. When you're speaking and my brain's going, hurry up, I got my rebuttal, I know what I want, you know, I'm gonna convince you, or, you know, et cetera. Slow it down, can I walk in your shoes? Can I just try and understand you? Doesn't mean I have to agree with you, but can I just be with you? And I've been doing counseling and coaching for over 40 years, and I always see this when the speaker feels understood. And I'll exaggerate it a little bit for effect. I'll always see, uh, you get me. Because if I'm in conflict, what's going on in the, brain, in the brain, the amygdala is activating, our hemispheres are separating, I'm back in reptile brain, and I don't care how much I've learned, I'm in survival. I'm going to survive. But when I connect with you and you connect with me and I feel compassion and understanding, the amygdala reduces, the hemispheres come back, I can now get back to my reasoning. And you have a game board here, I'm going to show you a little bit, that these young people are learning these skills, and I was over there with YEP today. So phase two is what we're going to feature tonight. It's the Young Peace Builders Program. What we're doing here is we're involving nonviolent communication, the service learning model I spoke about, and the ethics in, in the Rotary. They get, uh, and this is the learning standards, they're going to learn self-awareness, self-management, then social awareness. So how do I know what's going on with me, but then how am I in relation to, to me and you? Then relationship skills, and then responsible decision making. So this is all part of what education teaches, bless you, bless you. And what I've seen for 40 years is you don't even get in the building unless you're lined but up these, these standards. And all these teachers, they're overwhelmed you know, with all they're asked to do. And it takes the village to develop it. By the way, I want to share one thing. In Columbus, I just learned of a program. It's called the Family Ambassador Program. And these are volunteers that work with the school, and they've identified the most at-risk youth and families. And those are volunteers that work with those families. So when the mother is overwhelmed, or who is it, maybe a single parent, two jobs, whatever, they've got somebody giving them the empathy and support. Very, very exciting. They get a handbook, uh, this is grades four through six, ideally it goes for everybody. And then they get the reflection journals. Then we have the skills enhancements, so we're doing uh, evidence-based work. And I'm gonna go through this quickly because I wanna represent, you know, respect your time. 
Here I am, a picture, I'm in a, at a school where they're working with high risk uh, students that are excessively truant. Guess who, who's working in the court system here? So most of them get into the juvenile court system and they say, you're either going to jail or you can go over to this program. And they say, okay, I'll go over to there. But a lot of times what happens is they're 16 years old, there's two or three grades behind maybe, they've got a little ones they're taking care of, maybe mom's crack cocaine addict, they gotta figure out how they're gonna get a job, okay, how are they gonna graduate or maybe get their GED. And I'm training the staff, they're amazing how much care and love they give. And what they're doing then is they're integrating this program into that, that work. So that's an, at risk, those are not high achieving. I'm thrilled about that. And then here is the Boys and Girls Club. I was talking to uh, Stacy earlier. This is one of my favorites. I wanted to try this out years ago. So I went to the south side of Columbus. I said, give me 20, 15, 20 students, and I can try, let's try this game board out in this program. Here's what happened, I gotta tell you this. I got them at the end of the day, after all day school, all two hours after school, I had about a half an hour. I said, just call me Mr. Tom. I said, what goes on around here you don't like? Just like that, they knew me and said, well, we bully each other, we're selfish, we don't wanna share our games. If we do something wrong, we try and lie, lie our way out of it. They knew me two minutes and they're being that real. I said, okay, I said, well, what we're gonna work on, this is your club. We wanna see if you wanna be a more compassionate club. And I showed them this game board, and you can see it up here. I'll put the highlights on. They got choices on the bottom in the green. I said, how many of you, when you get uh, upset, you get hot and you blast out and you get in trouble? That's me. How many of you get real cold and you go inside and shut anybody out and you won't talk? That's me. Well, we're gonna show you, first thing is how you can keep your own power and regulation, and you're gonna learn how to get calm and alert and mindful. And they got it, they really you know, were into that. Then you can see observations, feelings, and needs. That's what we get into, what happened, how you feeling about it, and what's important to you, or the needs level, let's say. And what happened is I said, I'm gonna give you a, a poster, you come up with your six agreements, or your agreements, and here's the picture there. But, in, but be, I, take a week to do that, but I just wanna hear what's important to you in your club, your leaders here. Here's what they said. I think it was a little 11-year-old. You know, we need to be more respectful to staff. I said, really? <laughs> I said, would not have guessed that one is my first guess. Then they said, hey, share. Somebody said, fess up. You do something wrong, fess up. And a little girl said, be kind to each other. What does that tell us? I know them 15 minutes at that point. And they're sharing on that level. And what Marsha Rosenberg said in this nonviolent communication, our natural state is connection. We want to connect. How are you? Mostly, oh, okay, and we don't think about it. But really, I see you. How are you? This is what's happening with these skills. They come up with their agreement. Look at how colorful that is. And 12 weeks later, they're putting on their special event where they're signing you up to come in they're greeting you, you go to a tabletop, they're explaining what they learned. They go to another table, they got the game board with the feelings and needs, they're teaching the adults how to do feelings and needs. These are nine to 12 year olds leading the discussion. And I'm gonna share with you my favorite Rotary moment in 23 years. Afterwards we had the celebration, the certificates, the pizza party, and that little girl in gold looked at me and said, Mr. Tom, I think if everyone took this course, we'd have a more peaceful world. I said, how old are you? <laughs> she said, 10. I said, can I quote you? And she said, yes. So I quote her around the world now. And when we were at the Montessori school years ago, and you all were there, some of you from here, the, and we toward the very end of the uh, Sunday, we had the adults at one table we were talking about gun violence prevention, what are we gonna do about that? We had BBI people there saying, how are we gonna get sports involved? Really dynamic. And we just had a few young people. And I said, tell you what, why don't you take a poster board and just use art expression 
about what this weekend has meant to you. And here's a little girl that was 13. She was the youngest one there. And she drew this picture in 20 minutes. And she got up and she said, I don't talk in front of people. I'm the shy one. I can't believe I'm doing this. And she shared what that poster means to her. And there were people crying in the room. They were so touched by her. This is the power of service learning, of expression, and the arts. Just found out she's now a senior out there, and she wants to start uh, study marine biology when she graduates. This is what Boys and Girls Club, yep, bless you for what you're doing, and all the other programs like that in the school after school summer programs. So here we are now in the Virgin Islands. One of their projects, they're doing a peace poll project. So in the International Day of Peace, they got a peace poll. It's made peace prevail on Earth. The kids designed it. They got involved. I was talking to Stacy about this. We're imagining that this could happen actually soon over at YEP with the youth leading the way. They need your support. Real quick, phase three, we want this to be systemic. It's not just a one time. So as we go up the ladder, what we want to do is introduce the good news going on in community. It's like positive peace. And what we did is we tested it out where young people can learn their oral and written skills by saying, uh, Mr. Stacy, I hear you got a cool story. Can I interview you? And they need to use their empathy skills. They got to think, be organized. When they interview you, they need to clear questions. They need to take clear notes. We have someone from media here. Okay, Think about these young ones doing that. Then they go write their story. And when they go write it, they do peer review. Because is that one of those dot, dot things in grammar? I can't remember. But my name's going on this. I want to get this right. Rather than, oh, do we have to do that again? They're involved. It's their story. They own it. They get excited. And 20 stories becomes an e-newsletter. And then you can take the best ones and put them out to the community. Uh, for the four-way test, what's the third one, everyone? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? You want to build the goodwill in the community, watch these young kids share the good news going on. It will motivate it. And when we piloted this, the young kids through middle school, they made a newsletter and they sold them for 25 cents. They sold 300 and some copies in four hours. Everybody wanted one. Think about the power. And the last part we're doing on the high school level, I'll go through this quick, then we want to be looking at introducing research. Tenth grade, I'm not quite sure where here now. But here they're going to be looking at justice and injustice issues. They're going to be using media arts. They're going to be looking at, okay, what is, what's, how do we use to share resources? Is there inclusion, et cetera? And then at the end of it, they will give a report. Here's the findings we found out. Here's what's working. Here's our suggestions. Can you imagine these young people in leadership roles like that. So that's a little bit about what this is about. We're going to bring down a specialist and they're going to be doing adventure education with this. So it's not just a lecture, it's involved in the eight pillars. And then here's the staff that will be coming next year. Roxy Manning in the middle teaches around the world. She's from Trinidad originally and she'll come do the nonviolent communication but also diversity, you know, and how it aligns with, let's say, your culture in the Caribbean here. And Flavio teaches around the world also. He's from New York. Final thing, we're going to sustain the program. We're going to grow it. And for those that can stick around, I think I'll wait for this. This is a young girl, Halea Eastman. She uh, was a survivor of the Parkland, Florida shooting six years ago in the United States. In this story, the guns were shooting, through, the bullets were coming through the classroom. She pulled her classmate, can't remember his name, that was killed, pulled his body over hers so she could be totally silent and the gun, gunman wouldn't shoot, see her. That's how she survived. Can you imagine that age with that going on? She is now a national leader presented to Congress. She's all about gun violence. And we in the U.S., uh, partnered them up with the, uh, the government over there in St. Thomas. We're hoping we can have partnerships like that here. If you want to stay around, I'll play the video later. It's about a five-minute video. So here's the four questions. 
What's working now? What are your current challenges? Suggestions for improvement? How can you contribute as a peace builder to help improve these programs? I'd like to take maybe 10 minutes if you'd be willing to, and I'd like to just open it up, and I'd like to just have some connection, so I'm just not sharing with you, but I'd like to hear what's been useful for you about what you've heard, what's maybe some of the things that are important to you, maybe some of the challenges, or I'd like to hear some suggestions. And Stacy, if you would, because I know you're here and we had a little time to say, would you be willing to share a little bit about what's important to you about this program? Um, good evening, everyone. Tom, thanks for putting me on the spot. I really appreciate it. So um, what's working? We've been looking at this program, I think, for maybe a year and a half now, trying to see where it would fit in. And anyone who looks at our current client, I know the minister, the premier just spoke about it. And as recent as last Friday, we see where we're going more towards an environment of reaction and a negative reaction to almost everything. Um, today, what I looked at, and I'm a person who's very big on color and presentation, it's a very vibrant program. And it, the modules that are within it are actually achievable. I love the fact that Tom has included um, measurement and evaluation because I find that in the territory, we make a lot of knee-jerk reactions that are not based on statistics, but based on opinions. And I don't know if everyone else in the room would agree with me, but I'm aging. And what I think would have worked for me at an eight, nine-year-old level is definitely not going to appeal to our children now. So within this program, the colors, the to put them in front of something and give them the um, ability to move things around and own it is something that I love. But also the social, emotional involvement of it, I think that's something that's very much missing in our local curriculum. So kudos to you, sir. Let's say two young people are having a conflict Rather than well, you go to the principal or get out of the building or you're going to get suspended or whatever, you get the culture shift and say, hey, I want to go to the game board and see, let's go work it out. Okay? Or the other one that's really important is they can talk about, hey, I feel grateful. Let's build gratitude in and use the game board about what are we grateful for. You're switching the mindset. So that's the, it can be used. It's a framework, but use it in a way that's going to be most useful for you. I want to share also in the community level, when I go back to Columbus next week, I've been training neighborhood leaders. And in a large city, we have 200 neighborhoods, we have association leaders, and I'll be, they're going to be pulling a cohort of 50 people, 15 each from three neighborhoods plus the uh, support people, and they will go through the training. So you have neighborhood leaders diving deeper into it. We have the family ambassadors. We're going to have, the parents are going to come. So it's not just the youth here. You can do some work with that, but you know, with, I talk to any teacher, if you don't get the family involved, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes just one forward, two back, one two or two back. But let's say the family, that game board can actually be done at home in the, with the family. We also have the faith communities. Uh, the state of Ohio, uh, a council of churches just got, handed the lead on gun violence prevention, and I called him up and I said, Reverend Jack, there's too much violence going on and hate. Let's do something. He said, Tom, I was gonna call you. We're ready to do the nonviolent communication training. So these are sectors. It's a youth program, but it takes the village. And this is what I'm excited about. How about a couple more, if you would be willing to? Anyone else would be willing to share either what's been useful for you, what you've heard, or any suggestions or What's a challenge that's important to you? Just raise your hand if you'd be willing to do that, and I'd appreciate that for a little connection. Now, are you rubbing your ear or are you raising your hand? <laughs> okay, that's a nice earring, thank you. Okay. It's like when you're at a bidding place, you know, and you go like this, you know, you bought it, okay. That sort of thing. All right, so I'm not sure if there would be a, a connection what I'd like you to do, if you'd be willing to, just for a few minutes, is to, um, there's some pa pads on the pa uh, uh, those little sticky notes. If you'd be able to write one thing of a suggestion or an offering, what's one thing you'd like to do maybe to help the school system or the justice system or the neighborhoods or the after school or the faith communities? 
And if you don't mind, um, is it Walter, I think? Uh, we got to talk a little bit before we started. Uh, let me do one more story. Uh, a colleague of mine uh, is doing training around the world in restorative justice. And when you use nonviolent communication in restorative justice, he was from England originally. His daughter moved to Brazil, and he wanted to be closer to her, so he moved to Rio de Janeiro. And there he had the famous mountaintop with the Christ statue up there. And he was told, don't go up that mountain. It's one of the worst gang places in the world. So that was a challenge for him. <laughs> he said, I'm going the other way. He started going there. And they had the posts and the sentries and you and Ark and all that. Took him a little time for them to trust him. Eventually, they saw he was okay. And he said, hey, there's another way. And he started working with the court system on a diversion program. And when there's heavy conflict, he said, let's bring the community together. Sometimes there's 10 people maybe in the room. They all have a pre-meeting, pre getting their anger out, and this, that, and the other, getting set for some of this nonviolent communication of respect and safety. And when they're in the room, everybody gets their chance to get heard. And once they feel heard without reaction and judgment, you really have it as a structured program, then they start saying, all right, rather than blaming you, I'm gonna share my responsibility in this. I, I did this, I wish I would have done it differently. I snapped at you, I threatened you, whatever. I wish I would have done differently. Or, you know, I just sat by and didn't do anything. I wish I would have had the courage to maybe step up and offer something. And when people start hearing people take ownership, there's a shift. So you're not just gonna to hear to blame me, but you're taking ownership. That's the connection. And when they connect, then you begin to collaborate. And in nonviolent communication, when we make action steps, we have five different keys to it. An action step is positively stated. It's not, we gotta, we gotta stop doing this or stuff. We are gonna positively work with this to reduce gun violence and to build community, let's say, and whatever. It's, it's a dual, it's concrete and specific. It's also doable. It's not this pie in the sky. It's doable, it's timely, and then you can measure it. And I'll give you an example specifically at St. Thomas. Uh, there was the uh, University of Virgin Islands representative had 80 some students on St. Croix involved in an all day program and she's gonna be on St. Thomas in two weeks. I said, let's make that an action plan. How about if we help fill that room with young people there? That is a doable, positive action step that we all can, all can do. Another one they came up with is how important it is for young children to have food. But what happens if there's no school? And what happens if the transportation breaks down? And what happens if the parents say, I can't get them there, and I don't have any food? Well, we were talking about some faith communities that have vans up north, and they're there available, and there's volunteers. They said, hey, we'll start offering our van. There's creative ways, because when we connect, communicate connection, that's the key, then there's all kinds of creative opportunities. And look at the talent in this room right now. Look at the commitment of how you all have come here tonight. So I just want to offer an option. It's not the way, it's one. And it only counts if it's value added. If it brings value, Let's do it. If it doesn't, okay. But let's keep building as we build peace together. And service is a way that will switch and give kids a leadership piece. Last story. I did this with drug and alcohol, uh, working with theater, with the uh, university theater department. And we did a pre-test and post-test. And what we found out is the youth that went through this program the ones that just saw an assembly kept 5% of what they remembered. Our kids maintained 70% of the information. But here's the part that blew me away. We gave them a, a, a kind of a life review survey with their name not on it. It was number one, number two, so they could be real. We put down, what do you do after school? Do you just kind of leisure and lazy and you know whatever? Do you get in fights? Okay, are you involved you know, in drugs? And I won't go through the whole thing, but we had a 55% reduction from pre-test to post-test, 12 weeks later, 
on people saying, I've stopped using. Because they were putting on the play about sobering thoughts. Now, I'm a drug and alcohol counselor for years. We're not going to get the addict out of that. But the main thing is the kids that are just bored. They just, I'm going to get high. Give them something to do. Give them leadership and empowerment. They want to walk the walk. So my hope is that you'll integrate in this program, find, build committees on community, build committees to work with the schools, and let's build peace together. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much again for being here with us. And I hope that you're going away with the thought or thinking about things that we can do within the BVI to improve the situation, to prevent um, gun violence from getting any worse than it is, to encourage harmony and love within our schools. There have been way too many reports of fights and so on in our schools. So I think together, I think we're some pretty smart people, and I think we have the community at heart. So I think if we can really come together and work together on this initiative, it can be hugely, hugely successful. Um, I, I'm going to call you out. Um, one, I'm going to call one person out. Um, when uh, she was called and told about this program, she thought, oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Uh, my office needs to get involved with this. She is on leave. She's on leave from her work and she's here today. Jackie, Jacqueline, Officer Jacqueline, thank you very much for being here. It shows dedication and keen interest in seeing change come about, particularly with our young people. So thank you and thank all of you. Lynette, I was looking for you. You were supposed to be doing this. Thank you. <laughs> um, so Tom is really an amazing person. I got to know him, I think it's just over four years ago when we went down for the training in the US Virgin Islands. And again, we do apologize for the short notice, but I think your presence is really a testament to your willingness to work with us and see what can be done to um, improve the situation we have to help our young people get on the right path because for some of you, the notice was extremely, extremely short. And that is in a note that I sent out. It's only because a small group of us were supposed to go to St. Thomas for their event over the weekend. And then Tom and I had a conversation and we thought it could be far more valuable if Tom came, he extended his time. He was always going to come over. But if he came and spent a few more days um, so that we can have the interaction with more persons. And I'm sure you've forgiven us because you're here. So thank you very much for your understanding in that regard. Um, so we look forward to continuing the conversation. Do write your thoughts, um, the, uh, answer the questions, because that would help to inform um, to some extent the way we proceed with this. And while it is an, in, an initiative of the BVI Rotary family, we really want this to be an effort, a community effort across the BVI. So we look forward to partnering with all of you. So thank you very much and thank you, Tom.